Mm. Seriously, that's better than I've ever seen. It's a beautiful shot. And yes, this is part of my regular talk. I didn't stick it in here to be nice to you because you know I'm not going to be nice to you. It's a beautiful shot. What kind of camera? Was this a cheapy camera or was this a good one? <laughs> okay, a little simple digital camera. Cheapy. Yeah. Beautiful shot. Nice framing, too. Look at that. Look at that. All right. I'll admit, yes, this is copyright infringement. I ripped this off from a calendar. I don't care. It's the most beautiful supernumerary shot I've ever seen. Just gorgeous. And you can get two, three, five layers. Those are tiny, tiny droplets. So that's your interference bow. All right, let's look at this one. Ah, I threw away my big raindrop much too fast because this is a mixed rainstorm. You see, you got a rainbow that extends higher up, but look at how bright it is near the ground. Those are the big drops adding to the rainbow. And look at just how much light they add. That's why it's so much brighter down here. Up here, you can already see right about here, these big raindrops are no longer adding to the rainbow. It's all down in here. Really cool effect. You get closer to the ground, you can get real, br really bright near the ground. Now look at this. Now if you were standing next to those trees, you would not go, oh man, it's so bright from the rainbow. No, this is an effect for you, the observer. You're seeing how the light is scattered. If you were standing there, you might see this effect, you know, another 100 yards away. Because it's obvious this rainbow's close. But you would not be lit up by this. Just like that, if you were standing next to that uh, the telegraph lo line, the, the pole. You would not see it lit up if you were standing there. Oh, wow, cool, what's making the light? Oh, rainbow. doesn't work that way. It's for you, the observer, to see that effect. And it is very cool. Who stole my color? Now we got something weird happening here. I guess it's a rainbow. Where's the color? There's no color. That is a white rainbow. This is where, remember when we started out, I said if you understand reflection, you know, reflection and refraction, you had two thirds of what you needed to understand in my talk. Here comes number three, diffraction. And I also happen to know you've already talked about this a little bit, so this shouldn't be that tough. Next two slides. One, two. You don't want to do this out here because we don't have great waves out here on the beach. But if you were to go to where, where the real ocean is, as, and you build a wall, leave a little opening. As the waves come in, they crash against your wall. But if you leave a little opening, those, some of the waves are going to sneak through, and then they're going to start to spread out. Okay? Diffraction. You have a tiny opening. The waves of water on the beach, or light, if it's a small opening, will begin to spread out, okay? It's also, if I were to hold my hand like this, all right? Now if you guys over here, you can see my, the shadow. There's a little bit of light getting through, a little bit. As I close that down, I can get to the point where my fingers are actually closer together, but the light that's coming through is spreading out. Diffraction. Another effect you can see of diffraction is if you hold your fingers together. Hold them right up to your eye. And as you pinch them together, wait a minute. Looks like my fingers are touching before they ever touch. That's also the black drop effect you'll see with the transit of Venus. We talked about this last night. Diffraction. Okay? Anyway, so what's happening is the light is coming through a very tiny opening and spreading out. Well, now we look at this picture. This isn't rain. This is fog which is like a cloud that's come down. The weird thing is there's, it's a double rainbow, sort of, to the inside. Do you see it? It's not strong, but it's there. Well, Greenler, who took this picture, looked at that and said, that looks like a supernumerary. Well, he's Dr. Greenler, which means he likes doing math. And he said, let's do this problem backwards. Let's say that is a supernumerary. Is it? I don't know. But let's say it is. If the supernumerary is that far away, how tiny must those droplets of water be for it to be that far away from the rain main rainbow? He did the work, he did the work, he punched in his calculator. 
And he did it again to make sure because he's a smart guy. The raindrops had to be four microns across, which happens to be the size of droplets of fog. Turns out that is a supernumerary. Cool. Okay. Why is there no color? Diffraction. You have the raindrop. The light has gone in, it's refracted, it's reflected, it's refracted. But because it's such a tiny droplet, it's diffracted. Now what happens when you spread out all the individual colors of the rainbow? They mix back together. Thank you for ruining my lines, but you're absolutely correct. You're right. It's like when the prism spread the light out, put another prism here, bend it back together. That's exactly what happens. You've put the light back together, you get a white rainbow. Bizarre, but they're there. Now, people always tell me, oh, you got your picture on upside down. No, I don't. This is the aircraft wing. There's a layer of clouds up here. There's a layer of clouds down below it. And you're flying, if you're flying just above a puffy cloud deck, clouds are not like bricks, here's the edge. There's always droplets floating above it. And if that happens, you will get a white rainbow. Go to the next slide, please. There it is. Okay, sun's coming in behind. There's your 42 degree circle. Your 42 degree, hello, when did you get here? But uh, instead of looking up into the sky, you're now looking at the droplets that are above the cloud exactly what you have right here. You can see, it again, get on the opposite side of the plane of the sun if you're flying just above a soft cloud deck. You might see a white rainbow below you. Okay? How's that one? There's, there's a, what's called a fog bow. You know, as the morning mist is rising up, you, the colors can be there a little, but because of diffraction, they're mostly getting mixed. Okay? And we're actually going to talk more about why you have more red in this picture in about two more shots. But first, my shot. July, what do they call those stores? Oh, yes, yeah, 7-Eleven. July 11th, 1991. I paid $2,000 to watch a cloud get dark. I went to Hawaii for the total eclipse of the sun. Missed it. But I had a rental car. It wasn't mine. I didn't care what I did to it. Rental cars are great. You can destroy a car for $30 a day. It's wonderful. I drove this up to the top of Mauna Kea, 14,000 feet, where you are above the clouds. And Steve was talking about this last night, about how the air is thinner, and you're going right from sea level. I didn't think about this. We drove up, and I, this was not with Lisa. This was with somebody else, I was, uh, a friend at the time. We drove up there. I get out of the car. It's freezing. It's about 36 degrees. And I'm, I'm walking around like a drunk. So what's, uh, what's going on? Hello, legs, feet, we're still attached. You know, hold me up. Please. I didn't know about altitude sickness. Not enough air to get what few brain cells I have left working. It was a lot of fun. Whee! Well, now we start driving down the map. By the way, if you go to Hawaii, when you fly from island to island, those jets fly at 12,000 feet. Here I've just driven up to 14,000 feet. So I'm above where the jets fly for the between the islands. Now I'm coming back down into the clouds. And there's this rainbow in front of me with no color. Now remember, this is 1991. I put this talk together about 2004. I had no idea what I was seeing, but it was something I'd never seen before. I just took the picture. I thought, you know, this is so cool, I'm going to take another one. I had run out of film. So I had to put a different kind of film in, and I had to take two pictures, then I just taped them together. What, is the, what am I looking at? Well, now we go to 2004 when I'm putting this talk together, and I'm going, I remember I saw one of these. One, and I had to go through, like, boxes of pictures to find this and tape it together. And I finally knew what I had seen back in 91, which was a white rainbow produced just before I drove into the cloud as I was coming down off the top of Mauna Kea is a really cool sight. Now that's an even cooler one. Now at least we got some color. That's a red rainbow. Where's the, where, go to the next slide, please. Where's the rest of the color? There's nothing there. 
There's nothing there either. That is a red rainbow. Where's the color come from? Real simple. The sun. But what happens in this shot? Where's the sun, high or low? Sun is low. Rainbow's high. A lot of times as the sun is setting, that sunlight's coming through a lot more atmosphere. The only color coming through are the reds and yellows. So you don't have white light from the sun. You have limited color, and that's all you got there is red. Notice as you're getting closer to the horizon, you get the big raindrops adding their part. That's why you get a little more of the yellow as you get farther down. Yeah, if this is just before sunset, you're going to have a red rainbow. Okay, cool, cool shot. All right, at this point, I'm going to take one quick, quick break just to ask Marianne, do you have a watch? What time is it? I have 10 minutes left, and I've got 20, uh, uh, about 40 minutes of slides. This is where we start to pick up speed, so you guys have to think faster. This is your uh, midterm. I'm going to throw you sl three slides. You tell me what's happening. Okay? Slide one. Two. Three. All right? Let's do it again. Don't look at the middle one. And what did we say about every time you give the first answer? <laughs> Davey, you will be beaten. You're not allowed to talk. If you're going to interrupt, at least get it right, man. Notice we got a rainbow. Very low. Next slide. A little higher up. Next slide. The rainbow gets higher. The rainbow gets higher as the sun gets lower. Are you paying attention? <laughs> Thank you. That was your midterm, and you passed it just like that. You didn't even give the old farts a chance to have it turn. That's what's happening. Let's, let's do the math. Let's say that rainbow is one degree above the horizon. How high up is the sun? <laughs> what? 41. Four, uh, you. <laughs> if you got one degree worth of rainbow, you got 42 degrees away from the anti-solar point. If the rainbow is only one degree high, the anti-solar point is 41 below. Sun is 41 high. Wait a minute, a couple minutes. Now it's about three degrees above. As the rainbow rises, the sun is set. 39. What do you got? Five degrees there. So how high is the sun? 37. That's it. And once you start to understand these very simple things. You'll understand everything, except a picture like that. <laughs> there's a rainbow. There's a secondary. You don't, there's nothing to see here. <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. How does that? Rainbow, secondary, something, something. Do you know who took this picture? Luke Skywalker. This was taken on Tatooine. Don't you remember in the real Star Wars, the first one? Oh, I wish I could get off this dump of a planet. As he watches both suns set? Two suns. Two suns produces two separate sets of rainbows. Unless, of course, you happen to be stuck on the Earth. You still need a second sun. And we happen to have them if you do it right. First slide. If you're standing with your back to the water, you look behind you, sun's up there. Oh, look, there's a sun reflected in the water. Reflection of the sun, sunlight, OK? There's your regular 42 degrees. Here's your reflected. Go to the next slide. OK, you have your anti-solar point. But since the sun is now below the horizon, your reflected anti-solar point is above it. You get a rainbow from one, a regular bow. One from the reflected. Go to the next one. And here is exactly what's happening there. Anti-solar point reflected. Rainbow, secondary rainbow. Reflected rainbow, reflected secondary. They come together on the horizon. And there's your point right there. This picture was taken out in California on a very clear day. It wasn't windy. The ocean wasn't choppy. As the sun was setting, you had a second sun down in the ocean. Okay? This is a cool one. 
I know I, I gotta really start picking up speed here, but can't, can't skip this one. <laughs> Great picture, you got a rainbow and a reflection, but you got a problem, you can't have a reflection. Oh, there it is, wrong page. All right, uh, uh, Augustus de Morgan, in his book, A Budget of Paradoxes. A few years ago, an artist exhibited a picture with a rainbow and its apparent reflection. Some stated the idea that there could be no reflection of a rainbow. They were right. All right, just like a vampire. You can't have a reflection of a rainbow. Mm -hmm. They inferred that the artist had made a mistake. They were wrong. Now, that is a rainbow. And it appears to be a reflection. It is a reflection. Not of that rainbow. Notice they don't match up down here. Next slide. Next two slides, I think. Yep, two. Okay. What's happening here is person standing there. Sunlight's coming in. There's the 42 degrees. All right? There's their cone. They're seeing it. But now, if you were standing over here, this would be your 42 degree cone. You'd be seeing that rainbow. But you're not. You're standing here. But you're looking down into the water, a reflected surface, and you're seeing the reflection of a rainbow you can't even see. You can see that rainbow. You can't see the other one, because the other one would be different. You'd have to change your position. But you can see the reflection of it in the water. And here's another one of those reflected. We're not, we're not gonna worry about that, we just did that. All right, look at this. Now this one's a little tougher to figure out because it's farther away. Let me just skip that and go to my favorite. Look at that. Look at the supernumeraries in that shot. It's beautiful. Darker on the outside, lighter on the inside. But look at how the trees there, they don't line up. That rainbow that is a beautiful reflection is a beautiful rainbow that you can't see. It's not the reflection of that rainbow. It seems a little weird, but if you think about it, think about that, it makes sense. Next slide, please. Uh, two. We're going to skip over this real fast because this can give you headaches. But you can see a rainbow in the surface of a pond. Because that skin effect we talked about with water, you will sometimes get droplets that sit on the surface. They don't break the skin of the lake. They sit on the surface. And because of that, you can get a rainbow on the surface of a pond. In fact, theoretically, if you're out on a rowboat or something on a perfectly still morning, misty as the sun comes up, you could have a rainbow that reflects in the mist and extends down onto the surface of the lake, and then you could have a reflected version of the same thing around the reflected anti-solar point. You could have a double rainbow, actually quadruple, that fork all the way around continued. Never seen it, it's possible. Here we have here we have the, uh, the dew in the grass. Remember we said about the straight back angle in those first shots where the light came in and bounced right back? This is called high leg and shine. All right, don't ask me how to spell that one either. But it's why it's bright around his head. The sunlight's coming in, bouncing straight back. You get a brightening around your head, then you get the rainbow over here. All right, uh, I'll, I'll skip the fun part. This was uh, at a Radiohead concert because what was their last album? In rainbows. A friend of mine's a big Radiohead fan. Cool picture. Big deal. Look around. Rainbows are everywhere. You can make your own. Look at all the supernumeraries in that one. Very fine mist. All right? Mist coming off the waterfall. You can get rainbows below the horizon. All right? You have the mist coming off the waterfall. Beautiful uh, rainbow. Cumberland Falls, Kentucky. Very famous. All right? You got the falls here. There's the rainbow. Extended, just to show the whole thing. But there's something kind of weird about this picture. Does anybody notice it? It's nighttime. Those are stars. This is a moon boat. And Cumberland Falls is just in such a perfect position that during full moon, they are one of the most predictable places in the world you can see a moon boat. You don't have to go to Kentucky. You just need the right conditions. This was taken in Southern California. If the conditions are right, full moon will give you a rainbow. Uh, Old Faithful, Geyser. Know where to look, you'll get the conditions. Anytime there's mist, get yourself in the right position, you can find the rainbow. Leaving New York on a cruise, right there. 
right in the, right in the uh, water cannons. I, this cruise, I took, I took six pictures on the whole vacation. I took 200 shots trying to get the mist coming off the bow of the ship just right to get the rainbow down below me. I don't know if this one shows up. This is not my picture. You see the mist coming up from the dolphin with the blowhole? It's faint. I wish that was a better shot. I like this one, just blown up. Now, here's where we would get into the final, but we don't have time to do the final, so we're just going to go through why every one of these pictures is a lie. See if you can catch it first. What's producing the rain? There's a rainbow. Where's the rain? There's no clouds. Oh, it's the spray off the ocean. Then it should be down here. Until you notice the angle of the sun means the anti-solar point's over here. This is what's called airbrushing or Photoshop fake. Anybody like that one? Nice pretty rainbow, nice colors, fake. That's morning mist, white rainbow. Shouldn't be that much color, fake. Do we even have to talk about this one? There's the sun, there's the uh, long. Ah, this one is real. And the problem with this picture is a lot of things. First of all, it's winter. Look at all the ice on the trees. Well, you need droplets of water, not crystals. If you've got cold air, you've got crystals, no rainbow. Look at the trees in the back. They're green. How's this picture taken? It is weird. But if I give you the answer, it suddenly isn't such a weird shot. What you're seeing is this picture that was here. You're not seeing the picture taken here which is Niagara Falls. And all of the mist coming off, producing that rainbow on a nice cold winter day. This is the most vicious rainbow picture I have ever seen. Notice, rainbow, rainbow. They don't match. Instead of taking the next 20 minutes for you to figure out why, what happens? Ocean, sky. Rain, mist from the ocean. Salt water, Fresh water. Different liquids have different indexes of refraction. They bend the light differently. Yeah, that's why you have a rainbow that doesn't match up. How about that one? Beautiful shot, fake. And I put the website, I left this guy's website up so you don't have to support him. And I wrote to him and said, oh, I took that picture. It's like, no, you didn't. Well, it's five pictures. Yeah, you didn't say that. You said it's a picture. The only part that's real is the part he tried to get rid of, which is this. Notice there's no brightening on the inside and no dark on the outside. He stitched them all together and in Photoshop made them all nice and even. He ruined what was a natural shot. Yes, it, you will get a 360 degree, but he couldn't get rid of that and that's the only part that makes me convinced it's real. I'd like to end with this because it's simply the most spectacular rainbow picture I have ever seen. It's unbelievable. You got supernumeraries, brighter on the inside, red to the outside, reversed there, Alexander's dark band. You could not end with a better picture than this. And you now know almost everything there is to know about rainbows, except for one last detail. What is it you're supposed to find at the end of a rainbow? Wow. Yeah, I didn't cover that. All I'm gonna leave you with is this. Be careful what you wish for. Thank you very much. All right. Everybody who's not standing in the back, put your hand, uh, too late, your hands are not in front of your eyes. I got to get this stuff out of here quickly because we got a real speaker coming up. But thank you all for your patience. You guys are a lot of fun. <laughs>